Today on the show, we're going to be talking about Linda Danvers, the forgotten Supergirl. If you didn't know, the last time Linda actually appeared in DC continuity, it caused a huge plot hole that was never fixed. Then this show is for you. So Linda was actually DC's main Supergirl for most of the 90s, but before we get into her, you really need to understand where she came from. So there was this huge event at DC in the 80s called Crisis on Infinite Earths that basically restructured a lot of DC's continuity. It sort of got their multiverse down to a single universe and they really wanted Superman to be the only Kryptonian. So any characters that had Kryptonian links were either altered or just killed off. You know, you had Crypto, Superboy Prime, and of course, Supergirl. DC actually didn't even have a Supergirl for a few years, but people really did like Supergirl. So in the late 1980s, DC introduced a new character. Her name was Matrix and she was from a pocket universe and was created from a protoplasm in Lana Lang's image by a good version of Lex Luthor from this universe. There was this whole thing for a while where Lex had a thing for Lana and then she thought she was Lana for a while. Like her story is a completely different thing and was fairly short in comparison. Anyway, she was created to stop this universe's version of criminals from the Phantom Zone, but she wasn't strong enough to defeat them on her own, so she was sent to the main universe to get Superman to bring him back so they could team up and defeat them together. By the time the battle was done, there was no life left on her universe. So Matrix was actually taken to the main universe by Superman, adopted the name May, and was taken in by the Kents. She became the first Supergirl in the DC universe post-crisis and this would bring us to Linda, who was introduced in Supergirl Volume 4, number 1 in 1996. So Linda's story does not start out well. Her boyfriend had her involved in arson and homicide, and she was just not a good person. Like, there's this one scene where she and Buzz have killed a person, and they're doing, like, inappropriate things next to the corpse. It's just not good. And they were doing this all in the name of this demonic cult that Buzz was a part of. What Linda didn't know was that Buzz was actually a demon and he was like exploiting the darkness that lives inside of every person. So he could use her as a sacrifice for his demonic cult. One nice thing about Linda was that she was an artist and when she was younger, her favorite subject was Supergirl. She loved to do sculptures of Supergirl. One day, Buzz and Linda had an argument. He burnt her leg with his cigarette. She's like, what the hell? And he like really doesn't apologize. So she storms off and then she's pulled into a back alley. She manages to fight the people off. She begins to run and in the distance, she sees Buzz. Next thing anyone knows is her van is found in a nearby forest with the demonic symbols all over it. Everyone kind of knew of the cult in town, like their symbols had been about, and they knew that the cult had been linked with several beheadings that had happened recently. So her parents call in Supergirl because they're like, Okay, Linda was a big fan of Supergirl. There might be some kind of spiritual connection there. Supergirl might be able to help our daughter. What Linda's parents really didn't know is Matrix had been conflicted in herself. Like she knew she wasn't a person and she kept looking inside of herself to see if she had a soul and she just felt nothing looking back. Matrix then learns of a warehouse fire and figures out that it's the cult. Turns out that Buzz is trying to sacrifice Linda to bring the demon Chakat into the world. He slits Linda's throat, sets her on fire, thinks that will be that because Linda is like dead here basically. There's no way she can be brought back. Matrix goes to this dying girl that she doesn't know. She hasn't been told about any of the terrible things Linda has done. And Linda admits she messed up her life with her last dying breath. And this makes Matrix think of every person she has ever known. And she thinks, none of them really know me. None of them really know this person that doesn't have a soul. So she holds Linda's hand and the two of them merge into one hybrid being. This saves Linda's life and lets Matrix have a chance at having a soul. When Supergirl first wakes up, she's really confused because she knows her name is Linda, but all of her memories are jumbled because she's also like, wait, I remember being Supergirl, but I also remember being Linda. When she's trying to piece everything together, she remembers what happens and realizes that she's two people in one. She defeats Chakat very early on, and it's very clear that Matrix in the beginning is the dominant personality because they don't really have any of Linda's memories. In fact, a lot of the early issues of the comic are basically dedicated to recovering Linda's memory so they can piece their life together and figure out 
who Linda Danvers was, and Matrix is shocked to find out that she has merged with a terrible person that maybe didn't deserve a second chance at life. During final night, first of all, people in the town were freaking out. They didn't know where to put their blame and fear, so Supergirl was getting the full experience of the townspeople's anger, but she was patient for the most part. Gorilla Grodd would actually try and take over the town and would try and mind control Supergirl so she would do his bidding. When she realised that she assisted the capture of her father, of Linda's father, she was able to break out of the mind control and fight back. But during this fight, she releases a psi blast at Gorilla Grodd. This misses, hits an icicle, and this stabs Gorilla Grodd through the chest, seemingly killing him. This story was important because we really saw that Matrix Supergirl felt alive for the first time, and she felt an intense amount of guilt for killing Gorilla Grodd. Like, she knew killing was bad, obviously, like it was programmed into her when she was just Matrix, but now that she was alive and she knew what life felt like, the idea of taking that away broke her heart a little bit. It's also in this story that she decides to stay in this town that Linda's from, and that is Leesburg. Memories would gradually come back to Supergirl and they were triggered by the strangest things, like one memory was given back to her based on a sculpture that she did of an angel as a kid. Turns out she won first prize for this angel sculpture in a contest at her church. Miss Meek, the reverend's wife, actually asked if she could have the statue. And when Linda went to go and drop it off, she sees the reverend beating his wife. So Linda runs away in panic, and later that day, she actually overhears a bunch of women talking about how the wife has skipped town and left the reverend for another man and how the reverend is such a nice man and he must be so heartbroken. But when Linda goes back to the reverend's house, she sees a rolled up carpet with blood and fabric dripping out of it. And Linda knows exactly what has happened. So she's seen the darker side of humanity at a very young age. Because of this, she begins to keep her distance from everyone involved with the church and religion in general. And Buzz sees this young girl and takes this opportunity to take advantage of her. Buzz explains to her that the Bible is nothing but a tool, the greatest atrocities in the world were all done in the name of God, and what she saw the Reverend do was just history building on itself. Then finally, he quotes Alistair Crowley at her. He tells her, do what thy wilt shall be the whole law. Keep in mind, Linda was in middle school at this point. She was a child. But when Buzz turns up again and offers to take Linda somewhere, she gets in his car and he takes her to his demonic cult where everyone's having sex and Linda's like, uh, I want to leave. And Buzz is like, no, just stay for five minutes, look around. And this was the beginning of Linda's abuse and downward spiral. Supergirl snaps out of this memory, finally understanding why Linda ended up the way she did. And she knows that Linda never really had a chance at life because of Buzz. It's worth mentioning, it's around this time in the comics that Linda meets a guy called Dick, and the two of them begin to date on and off, they're really attracted to each other, they go really well together, but it's nothing serious, it's just like dating. But Linda would also be set up on a blind date by her mother, but they don't realise that it's Buzz till it's too late. Buzz needed Linda to kill someone so she could be on the dark side again. This is when Tempest Fugit turns up at the table, blasts down a window, Linda's able to fend him off, and it's Buzz's aim to have Linda kill Tempest. But when her parents regain consciousness, she tells them, get to safety, I'm going after Buzz. He's not a good man. She hugs her parents, goes outside, and this is when the house explodes, killing her parents along with it. Supergirl loses it and she goes to kill Tempest. And when Buzz begins to edge her on, she's able to stop herself. She was able to listen to this man that she knows she shouldn't trust and stop herself. Linda passes out after this and time has gone back to before this whole thing broke out. And it turns out that Tempest was actually Dick, brainwashed and magically altered to work for Buzz. It's never fully explained why time went back after this story, but there's a lot of like divine intervention in this comic, so I've always put it down to divine intervention, but it just wasn't explicitly stated at this point. Following this, Linda's like, okay, the Kents were my parents when I was Matrix, I need to go and tell them the truth. And the Kents tell her that she was super brave for what she did, they accept the fact that she's Matrix and Linda with open arms, they love both of them as one of them, but they tell her that she has to go and tell Linda's parents the truth as well. Seeing as this went so well, she's like, well, of course my birth parents are going to accept it. 
they don't. Her father's like, get out of my house, you've absorbed my daughter. Her mother loses her own faith after this, like her mother had been so obsessed with Christianity before this, but after this she turns to alcohol and she loses her faith completely. Supergirl leaves their house crying, just begging for anything to make the pain go away. Shortly after this, during a fight, she manifests fire vision for the first time. Then after this, in a fight with Despero, he tries violating Supergirl's mind, and this is where she begins to feel her back ripping open. She manifests wings of pure flame. She was able to defeat Despero and give Elrond control of that body again. But Despero was able to plant a seed of itself in Supergirl's mind and began to prey on her conflicted feelings towards Linda's parents. Meanwhile, Linda's mother had gotten into a car crash from drink driving and was in hospital. While there, her father turns to one of Linda's friends, who's a doctor at the hospital, and was like, Matty, do you think Supergirl is good? And Matty, word for word, says, Supergirl saves people. She's basically an angel. Hearing this, Linda's father runs to Supergirl and shouts to her, Supergirl, do me a favor and beat him up. This causes her flame to purify all of the negativity that Despero was feeding on, defeating him, turning him to ash. And it's all thanks to those conflicted feelings leaving her and she's finally feeling acceptance and love. It's also worth noting that there's been this B-plot running through the books at this point about this kid called Wally who is also God. And basically he meets up with Linda and explains to her that she is now an Earthborn Angel. Now an Earthborn Angel comes into existence when one being is on the verge of death, like they can't come back from it, they're going to die merges with another being that's perfectly healthy and alive, in this case Linda and Matrix merge together, that person will become an Earthborn Angel. And there's currently three Earthborn Angels in existence. It's up to Linda to find the other two. I will say from this point onwards, Linda's story could be seen as pretty controversial, I guess. So I just want to remind you guys, my history of videos are not opinion pieces. I'm just going over the character's history as it was meant to be portrayed. So following this, Supergirl makes a pretty questionable decision. There's this really racist dude meant to speak at a university about why it's good to be racist. And obviously, no one is happy about that, so everyone at this university is protesting. And Steel has joined in with the protests. But Supergirl's feeling really conflicted because she's like, well, you know, this guy deserves his right to freedom of speech. And her friend Matty is like, I'm black that is not okay. Meanwhile, her friend Cutter's like, no, no, like everyone deserves their right to freedom of speech, even if you don't necessarily agree with what they're saying. And Matty's like, yeah, but it's to do with my skin color that I can't control. Cutter then points out that he's Jewish, but he wouldn't silence modern day Nazis. But Matty's like, that's good enough for you, but I didn't know you were Jewish until you brought it up. Meanwhile, my skin color is as clear as day. I can't stop people from seeing that. And Linda's just feeling really conflicted, like she's stuck in the middle of this conversation. But at the end of the day, she says, this guy has the right to say whatever he wants and everyone else has the right to protest. She decides that she wants to stop the students from rioting though, and obviously she ends up having to fight Steel. While the two of them are fighting, an explosion goes off, no one is hurt, but the guy is very shocked. Cut to the next day. Newspapers, media, outlets, everywhere is saying that Supergirl is a massive racist. Keep in mind, Linda's mother is still not talking to her at this point, so she's already feeling down about that. She's not a racist, she just made a bad decision, and she's now feeling down about that. Her friend Matty isn't speaking to her as Linda and can't stand Supergirl now because she thinks that Supergirl's a massive racist. She feels like her life is falling apart, she tries talking to the Kents, and then they put on the news, and then there's a news outlet calling Supergirl a racist. And out of the window, she sees Wally and she goes up to him and is like, right, you need to fix everything. I made a bad decision. If I am an earthborn angel, like you say, you need to be helping me. And Wally's like, okay, I can help your mother get over her alcoholism and find God again because your mother was happy when she was religious. And I can even help you figure out who Comet is because Comet was like this male hero Supergirl kind of had a crush on, like she kept thinking about him no matter what she did. But he's like, if I help you now, I can't help you later when you might really need my help. But Supergirl doesn't listen, she needs help now. So Wally goes and speaks to Linda's mother and basically has a God Squad talk with her and then reveals that he is God. Linda's mother begins to cry and now her faith is restored in Jesus. Meanwhile, with Supergirl, she finds out that Comet is actually a lesbian called Andy Jones. And Supergirl feels really conflicted because on the one hand, 
she's happy that she knows who Karma is, but on the other hand, she's like, well, I had a crush on you when I thought you were a dude, but now I know you're a woman, I kind of feel bad about having a crush on you. And Andy's like, yeah, but what's the difference? I'm still me either way, but that's a whole other, like, rabbit hole we're not gonna get into in this video. Andy begins to explain to Linda that after a bad life, Andy began to live on the edge and started to take part in extreme sports. She even started mountain climbing, but went up too high, fell, broke her leg, and started to die of hypothermia and frostbite. A being known as Z1, who was an artificial life form and on the run from a group known as the Stable, came to her rescue. His super suit was the only thing that allowed him to fly and wouldn't work in this cold and his artificial body began to break apart, so the two of them merged together and became a single entity, thus becoming the Earthborn Angel of Love. And that's why Supergirl couldn't stop thinking about Comet, because Comet is the Earthborn Angel of Love. So when Matrix and Linda merged, some of Matrix's protoplasm was left over. Over time, it reformed itself and became this evil, twisted version of Supergirl. It went on a murder spree before coming for Linda itself. It absorbs Linda into it, and it's up to Superman, Linda's father, and this mysterious light from within Linda to actually bring Linda out of this evil version of Matrix. Fun fact, this is actually how Superman learns about this whole Linda Matrix situation. And while he is mad that she kept this from him, he does accept her and love her. During Day of Judgment, Supergirl is able to speak to Zoriel, an actual angel, about her whole Earthborn angel situation. And she actually also asks about Wally, but Zoriel's like, who's Wally? So at least we know Wally's sort of like a isolated thing. <laughs> so Zoriel explains to Supergirl that when God created everything, he wept after he was done and those tears became angels. But he explains earthborn angels are different. There's a limited number of them at any given point because their power is directly a part of Shkina, the female aspect of God. Now, while God loves all of its creations, it especially loves the earthborn angels. But he explains that a human cannot hold the power of an earthborn angel forever, and over time it will become corrupted, which is shown when Supergirl's wings have turned into flame bat wings rather than being flame angel wings. It's also worth noting that prior to this, Comet had been captured, tortured, and brainwashed by Blith, the third earthborn angel, the earthborn angel of light. So this is where things begin to go from weird to flat out bizarre with the series, so please hold on. It does get a bit more normal again towards the end. So Cutter started running Supergirl Enterprises in an attempt to get a good public image out for Supergirl, but it turns out there's this church that started worshipping Supergirl as its centerpiece. It also turns out that Dick had been possessed by Buzz at this time and Buzz had just been in a dormant state. Buzz basically says that Supergirl has to help bring him back properly otherwise he's gonna kill Dick. So Supergirl has to go and get Buzz's existence and his body back from like this meteorite in space and bring it back to Dick so Buzz can come back. Supergirl does this thinking that this would fix Dick once and for all and everything would be fine. But it turns out when Buzz leaves Dick's body, Dick's cancer that he had prior to meeting Supergirl comes back with a vengeance. Now Buzz was no longer a part of Dick, the cancer began to spread rapidly. There's this point where Supergirl really doesn't want to deal with the church, but then a mob comes along and starts trying to worship her, which is really not what she wants. She tries to talk them down by telling them, well, yes, she was an earthborn angel, and they need to put their efforts into helping each other instead of trying to worship her. Then a woman comes up to her and is like, please help my baby, my baby's dying, please cure it. And Supergirl just begins to cry looking at this baby that has a very similar situation to her very close friend. And she holds it, she's crying, and then her flames begin to cover this child, and the child is cured. But then someone called Judah comes along, totally floors Supergirl, basically saying that she's a fraud, she's not a real servant of the presence. Supergirl doesn't wake up for a while, her consciousness is teleported to the city that exists between heaven and hell and limbo. The city was created for a being known as the Carnivore, for angels and demons that flat out rejected the order that God created. Buzz shows Supergirl that Comet is being held in this city, and before Supergirl can interrogate Buzz further, she wakes up. We also find out that Judah, Lex Luthor, and the Carnivore are all working together, but the Carnivore is like, 
super unstable. Supergirl is naturally very scared at this point, but she's like, I need to go and save Andy. I, ju I just have to go and save my friend. So she uses her teleportation abilities to go to where Andy is being held. She flat out punches Blith in the face, and then she finds out that Andy has been brainwashed by the carnivore. The fight is pretty one-sided, Supergirl beating Andy, and then Blith turns up, and spoiler alert, Supergirl is still stronger than the two of them, because the Earthborn Angel of Fire is much stronger than the Earthborn Angels of Love and Light. At one point in the fight, she teleports Blith away from Andy, and the two of them begin to fight on top of a mountain, but that's when an avalanche collapses on top of Blith, paralyzing all of her other than one arm. Supergirl actually wants to save Blith at this point, but that's when Comet turns up and takes Blith away to the carnivore. Linda tries to follow the two of them to the Between City, but the carnivore traps her in this like limbo space where she has to fight every single villain she's ever faced and the manifestations of her guilt that she felt when she was fighting against them. She was fighting for days and she was going to die. It was only thanks to when Buzz tells her mother to pray for Supergirl that she's granted an escape out of this space. I do just want to say, like, the creator of this comic isn't Christian. I'm not Christian. The creator of this comic is, like, Jewish. And I think he was just taking inspiration from Abrahamic religion as a whole rather than Christianity or Judaism or even Islam. When Linda returns from the limbo space, turns out, Dick is dead in his apartment. The head reverend of the church of Supergirl went to visit Dick and told him not to go for his final treatment and instead to ask Supergirl for healing at his church. He was basically swindling him out of his money, taking advantage of this sick person. Supergirl lets out a scream that is heard across the entire town. Supergirl's flames are now burning with anger. She goes to the church and exposes this guy as the fraud he is in front of everyone and strikes pure fear into his heart, which causes him to have a heart attack and die. And Linda doesn't realize she does this till it's too late. So now Supergirl feels like it's her fault Dick died because she could have stopped it. It's her fault this guy has died because she didn't control her anger. She just feels like she's a terrible person at this point. So she just hands herself over to the carnival and is like, you know what, I'm a terrible person take me away. The carnivore reveals that he has no intention of helping Blith become unparalyzed, and he also reveals to Comet that he was the first vampire in existence. But it was too late for the three Earthborn Angels to fight back at this point. The carnivore had all three of them and told the Presence that if he did not hand over the keys to heaven, he would destroy the angels and in turn the female aspect of God. The Presence surrendered and as a result, Earth changed. What was once good is now bad, and what was once bad is now good. Supergirl, all alone in her cell, thinking about all of her failures, was then visited by a gold angelic figure. And this figure tells her that she is powerful, and she has a reason to live, and she has to realize this for herself, because Linda is the fire and the flames of the Earthborn Angels. She is the leader, and so it falls to her to unite them and save the day. When Linda asks who this golden figure is, it simply replies that the name it's most fond of is Kara. Turns out the other two Earthborn Angels had a lot of conflicted feelings as well. Comet had a lot of conflicted feelings dealing with her family, not really accepting her as a lesbian, so she goes to visit them. And Blith ends up figuring out a way to fight her paralysis with the help of Buzz. She actually goes and merges with what remains of the corrupted protoplasm and is actually able to fight back against it, unlike Supergirl. So the three angels come together and go to the in-between world and fight hordes of demons. They begin to fight the carnivore and the fight is not going their way. And Kara visits Supergirl one more time and reminds her you have to unite all three Earthborn Angels. That's the only way you're going to win. The three angels unite and begin to fight the carnivore, but they're completely tied. So Supergirl begins to talk to the carnivore one-on-one, -on -one, and she basically arrives at the conclusion, you know what? She is Linda Danvers, and she's also Matrix. She is two beings that became one. What will be one more being? She absorbs the carnivore into herself, defeating it, and a streak of fire can be seen across the entire world. And this implants a memory in every single person that Supergirl has died. This removes the Earthborn Angel powers from her and Matrix along with it. When Linda wakes up, she's panicking because she can't feel Supergirl inside of herself and she's just 
Linda again. But Buzz hands her a letter and the letter is from Wally. He tells her that she single-handedly saved the lives of Andy, Blip and the entire universe. But because of her actions, everyone now knows that Supergirl died against an enemy of immense power, but no one really knows the specifics. So now Linda has to travel around the world following something called the Chaos Stream, risking her own life in the same way Matrix risked her life when the two of them first joined together so she can find Matrix once again. The series takes a turn in structure at this point, so beforehand where it was more of an overarching plot, now it's more of a monster of the week kind of deal with an overarching plot. Buzz joins Linda on her journey and the two of them make their first stop in Metropolis where there's just been a tidal wave, a bunch of people are taking advantage of that. So Linda jumps into a costume shop, creates a new costume made out of stuff from this costume shop and becomes Supergirl once again. And she has like a blonde wig and it's a whole deal. She's able to meet up with Superman and she explains the whole situation to him and he accepts the situation completely and she asks him to tell every superhero worldwide that she is who she says she is because if Superman can vouch for her then everyone will believe him. It is worth mentioning she does have powers at this point. She retained most of her super strength and super invulnerability but she can't fly anymore. She can only leap one eighth of a mile which also means falling one eighth of a mile. When they stopped in Las Vegas, they actually had to fight what remained of Buzz's old cult. But the main thing we got from this story is the fact that the location of Matrix had something to do with the Garden of Eden and Lilith, the mother of demons. Turns out that Matrix was being held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by Lilith in like this weird stasis. And along with Matrix, was the essence of the earthborn angel of fire. She was also forcing Twilight to work with her by holding her sister hostage. Now, if you don't know, Twilight is this new god that has all the powers of a new god and also the ability to bring people back from the dead. When Supergirl and Buzz, joined by Mary Marvel, finally get to the Garden of Eden, they find that Metatron, the guardian of the Garden of Eden, has been turned to stone. It also turns out that Lilith is planning to have the Chaos Stream explode to break open the lower parts of hell to let her son go free and her son is the carnivore. She disguises the bizarro Supergirl as Matrix has her attack Supergirl. This makes Supergirl kind of really unstable, which affects the Chaos Stream directly, so like it begins to explode. Mary begins to notice this, tries to warn Supergirl, Supergirl wouldn't listen, then Mary is stabbed by Hermesa. Seeing her friend die makes the Chaos Stream fully explode, the world begins to break apart in all the places that Supergirl has recently visited. Queen Mab, the Fey Queen, then visits Twilight, and Twilight is actually able to turn against Lilith. By this point in the fight, Linda is badly hurt, like she's been burnt alive, she's dying again basically. So this is when Matrix is finally able to break free, get involved in the fight, and she's able to hold her own, but she's not able to do enough. So Buzz gets involved, takes Hermesa's knife that he used to kill Mary Marvel, and throws it at Lilith's chest, because the only thing that can kill a demon is a demonic weapon. And with the combined will of everyone there, they were able to seal Hermesa, Lilith, and the Carnivore once again and fix the Chaos Stream. So Mary was dead, Twilight was dying, and Linda was dying. And naturally, Matrix goes to merge with Linda once again, and Linda's like, no, you already gave me a second chance at life once. You shouldn't do that again. Save Twilight, because she was brought into this situation against her will she should be allowed to live. So Matrix goes and merges with Twilight and the two of them use their powers to bring Linda back to life and restore her abilities to back before she was an Earthborn Angel, but just after she became Supergirl, meaning she has her original power set back. This means Linda was properly given a second chance at life and a second chance at just being Linda Danvers not being Supergirl, not being Matrix, she is just Linda. So Linda goes back to Leesburg and lives a normal life for a little while, but that's when she sees a rocket coming towards the town. So Linda uses her abilities to divert it to a nearby forest area and help it land properly. Out of this rocket steps a young girl wearing a Supergirl costume and her name is Kara Zor-El. Before the two of them can get to know each other properly, they're attacked by Rebel and Kara attacks Rebel but hurts Linda in the process. So Linda actually accuses Kara of being a demon, which Kara doesn't like, so Kara flies off in search of her cousin. When she eventually does find Superman, Superman thinks that she's just some fangirl. He doesn't realize who she is because 
Kara never existed in this timeline, she shouldn't be here. Linda was still suspicious, so she takes Kara to Star Labs just to make sure that she's really Kryptonian. And yep, sure as day, she is Kryptonian. So she decides she's gonna take Kara in, treat her as a younger sister, enroll her in school so she can live somewhat a normal life till they can figure out what's gonna go on with Kara. But this is when the Spectre visits the two of them and reveals that Kara is time and universe displaced. Turns out that the Spectre's counterpart, the Fatalist, was entirely responsible for Kara's rocket landing in Leesburg, but she has to go back to her own universe because if she doesn't, the fabric of reality will fall apart and everything will cease to exist. But the Spectre also reveals to Kara that she is going to die when she's very young. Keep in mind, Kara's not an adult hero at this point, she's a young teenage girl. No one wants to hear when they're a young teenager that they're going to die young, so Kara begins to break down crying, and Linda looks at her friend and is like, Kara, go back to school, I'm gonna fix this situation, don't worry, I'll speak to the Spectre myself, you just go back to school. What she doesn't realise till it's too late is Linda got in the rocket herself, and goes to Kara's reality, taking her place. In the past, Linda has a great time. She meets Superman, and adventures are pure and easy. Villains are easy to defeat. There's so much joy in being a hero. But one day, Linda's feeling kind of lonely, and she misses home. And it's here that Superman reveals to her that he used his x-ray vision and could tell that she was wearing a wig. But he's fallen in love with her over the years. Like, he knows that she's not his cousin Kara. He knows that she's a human. And so the two of them get married, and the two of them have a daughter named Arela. Eight years after Linda arrived on Earth 1, Crisis on Infinite Earths begins to break out, and the Spectre visits her and is like, you need to go back, and Kara needs to come here. And Linda's like, no, 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 I'm gonna take her place, I'm gonna do what she was supposed to do and sacrifice myself. Like, I've prepared myself for it, I've lived a happy life, I'm ready to do this. And the Spectre is like, no, your power set won't work against the Anti-Monitor, it has to be Kara. You cannot take her place. You have to go back and send this child to her death. If you don't, everything will cease to exist. Linda breaks down realizing that not only does she have to now send a child to her death, but she gave up everything back home. She built a new life here. She was happy. She's fallen in love. She's had a daughter. And all of this is about to be erased. She can't do anything to protect the people that she loves now. She can't do anything to protect the people back in her own time and universe. She can't do anything to protect the people in this time and universe other than send a child to her death. So she turns to the Spectre and says, if you don't protect my daughter from being erased, reality can go to hell. And the Spectre agrees that he will stop her daughter from being erased. Linda hugs her daughter goodbye and she promises her daughter that they will see each other again one day, not properly explaining the situation to her. She goes back to her reality, saves Kara from a villain called Xenon, punches Kara so she passes out, and takes Kara to her ship. And the last thing Kara said is, can't I stay? And then she sends Kara on her way to her death. After this, Linda visits her mother in hospital, who's just given birth to the reincarnation of Wally. And every night, the universe granted Linda visions of her daughter and Kara living happy, full lives. But it's not enough. It's just not enough. It doesn't bring her any comfort because she wanted to save Kara and be there for her daughter. And obviously seeing them live full lives from a distance isn't the same. She just felt like at the end of the day, she was never able to protect the people she loved. She experienced more loss than what she gained in her time as Supergirl, and she experienced more pain than joy. She was just left with a lot of agony in her heart and had nowhere to put it. She couldn't hate being Supergirl because it meant too much to her, so she just had to hate Linda Danvers, the very person she was. And if she hated herself, how could she have the right to be Supergirl anymore? So she decided to disappear and explain everything to Clark in a letter. And after this, she vanished from everyone's life, never returning as Supergirl. After this, there would only be one more story that Linda appeared in. It was called Rain and Hell, and 
The writer really didn't understand who Linda was and what this character meant to a lot of people and what that ending meant to a lot of people. Basically it tried portraying Linda as this corrupted hellish soul and it just didn't make any sense because Matrix had recently been erased from DC continuity but Linda had her earthborn angel powers so who did she merge with and it was never explained and it was kind of insulting to the character and just created a huge plot hole that was never resolved in DC continuity and that was the last time she appeared. I love Linda as a character. I think a lot of the storylines she's been in are questionable, but when they are good, they are so good and they always have great payoff. Even that sad, sad ending had payoff. I think it's time to bring Linda back. I think the world is right now. You know, we can bring Linda back and we can have a character that's inspired by Abrahamic religions, but isn't necessarily a religious character. That's something I like. Linda wasn't religious. She didn't believe in God. She didn't see herself as part of the God Squad. She was just a person. And I liked that. I like that you can have characters that are just people based off of Greek myths. Makes sense that we can have characters that are just people based off of Abrahamic religions. And also, now that the source wall is broken thanks to Dark Knight's metal, who better to help fix it than an Earthborn angel. And you don't really need to put her in the Supergirl book. She doesn't even need to be Supergirl. In fact, if I were to bring Linda back, I would just give her a Jessica Jones style title and call the book Linda. You could have adventures as an Earthborn angel without putting the Supergirl symbol on the character. She is Linda Danvers at the end of the day. She's not Supergirl necessarily. It's super Okay guys, that is it for today. So what do you think of Linda? Please let me know in the comments down below. Also don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, do all of my social links, check out my Patreon or my PayPal donation link. Seriously, any financial donations you can make helps the show so much. But if you can't, don't worry about it. But for now, my name is Faust. This has been Exploring Comics and it is super effective.